Oh, sorry, video setting in just a second. I just gotta write something down here. And there we go. I'm just gonna leave this here for everyone to see. So, let's talk about cheating in video games. This video applies to pretty much all multiplayer games, however, I'll be focusing on TF2, since that's what I know best. Actually, I don't even know best. These are only my own thoughts, and those aren't always 100% right, so do take what I say with a grain of salt. Or multiple grains. It's a whole bucket load, basically. Well, if you've been playing TF2 lately, you probably have a lot of salt left over, because there seems to have been an increase in cheating. And because of that, I wanted to talk about what I believe leads to cheating in multiplayer games, or rather, who's to blame for it. And I can tell you already, it's not just the cheaters themselves. So if cheating is the problem, then there are three main parts that support it. Not necessarily things that directly lead to cheating, but rather three pillars upon which it rests. The first of those three pillars are obviously the cheaters themselves. Do I really need to explain anything here? You know what cheaters are. They are the problem incarnate. Without them, there wouldn't be any cheating at all. Cheaters are entirely to blame for what they're doing. They decided to do it, no one forced them, it was their own choice and all the fault goes back to them. Unless they cheat in tournaments for prize money, they don't even have anything substantial to gain from it which could justify it. It doesn't earn them anything, aside from maybe making people upset, which usually seems to be their goal. Because as far as I know, the majority of cheaters in games don't do it because they're bad, but rather to get a reaction, preferably a negative one. They're a form of trolls, and since cheating is guaranteed to make people mad, they will always succeed. Also, quick side note, calling them script kiddies or even worse insults doesn't actually annoy them. Cheaters don't care, in fact it might even make them happier, because they know that you think you're getting to them, when in actuality, you obviously aren't. There's not much more I need to say about them in my opinion, so let's just move on. So that's the first pillar, but what about the second one? That would be the game's creator, in this case, Valve. Honestly, I would put them on the same levels as the cheaters, both for bad reasons and good ones. They made the game, so they have all the power in the world to control cheating in it. They have the code, they know how it works, or at least one should hope, but then again, this is TF2. If something happens in the game, which logically shouldn't happen, they're the first ones to be aware of it. Additionally, Valve also has back their own anti-cheat. It's a system that automatically detects external programs on your PC, which could help you cheat at the game. And here's the first problem. It's automated. There is no personal oversight, so as long as the system doesn't detect the cheater, they could be as blatant about it as they wanted. It's less of a cat and mouse game and more of an arms race so to speak. If Valve implements one countermeasure to cheating, the cheaters will find a way around it, until Valve implements another feature and the whole cycle continues. I can't blame Valve for not getting rid of cheating quickly enough, since it is pretty complicated and people will always find a workaround. Until machine learning is perfect, there is not going to be a surefire way of stopping it. And even then, because, you know, cheaters could also use machines. But what I can blame them for is not taking any other measures, such as banning people manually. Especially ones directly advertising their cheats. If someone uploads direct footage of their cheating on YouTube or is otherwise extremely obvious about it, they could easily be banned. But Valve doesn't do that, since they love their hands-off approach, even if it's seriously flawed. Cheating is as old as games themselves ever since the first person noticed that he could move his game piece when his partner wasn't looking. Cheating will always be part of any game. While it can never be fully prevented, as a creator you have to find a way to at least restrict it. In a similar vein, if a city has a big crime problem, it is the city council's responsibility to take care of it. But not just by employing police and combating it directly, like back, but also through improving education and creating more jobs, so that people don't even need to resort to crime because they have no other options. In this case, that would be making cheating way less attractive or necessary, which actually leads me to the next pillar. And that third pillar is the game itself. Yes, even though it has no free will, at least for now, the game itself can also be a reason for creating cheaters. TF2 probably less so, because it mostly focuses on messing around. Yes, you can go after victories, but there's no real incentive to do it. A player that plays the game daily is not going to be in a better spot than someone who plays it once every few weeks. You can't progress anywhere. But contrast that with CSGO or Dota, where a lot is often on the line. You gotta win games to increase your rank, and losing games can make you lose rank. Playing well is important, but not doing mistakes is even more important. Because of that, there's an even bigger increase in cheating, since there's a constant urge to outplay others. 
At the same time, that's also the reason for these games' toxic communities. Since there's a lot of display of skill, you also end up getting killed and losing a lot. That in return puts a sour taste in your mouth and you want to avoid that. How do you do that? By gaining the upper hand, and in extreme cases, even through any means. I believe that in these competitive games, cheating is usually done more to actually have an advantage, whereas in casual games like TF2, it's usually to get a reaction. But much like TF2, CSGO is now also free to play. That means that there is nothing to lose from cheating. A cheater got banned? Oh no! Now they have to make a whole other account! What a waste of 5 minutes! How inconvenient! A paid game on the other hand at least has an entrance fee, which makes it less attractive in the long run to cheat. If you get caught, you'll at least have to pay the whole price again, which could be too expensive after a while. But there's also another reason. Payday 2, for example, is incredibly easy to mod. There are hundreds of really cool and useful mods, from UI improvements over to actual gameplay changes. But that also means that it's incredibly easy to cheat in, especially since there's no real oversight from the developers. And people love to hate on Silent Assassin, a cheat that makes selfing the game a cakewalk, due to pretty much removing everything that makes it difficult. That may sound ridiculous, but anyone who's played Payday 2 can tell you how nerve-wrackingly annoying stealth can be in that game. Because of that, it's very understandable why someone would want to avoid that annoyance. Doesn't excuse it, but it's understandable. But again, if you only do it by playing by yourself, there's really no harm to it. So if there's a game where it's easy to cheat in, where cheats don't get detected that easily, and even if you do get detected you can just make another account because of 3, then yeah, you're gonna have cheaters. So these are the 3 main pillars which directly or indirectly support cheating. But actually, I lied. There are more than just 3 pillars. There's the 4th one. And this one, this is the one that people always like to conveniently overlook. Because this pillar is the players themselves. Yes. Even you. What the hell, Dara Kasali? I mean, German Peter? I'm innocent, I never cheat, you may say. Yes, that may be true. But if there's a cheater on your team and you, for whatever reason, refuse to kick them, you are part of the problem. And that can't be argued. Even just tolerating such behavior by going, eh, it's not so bad, is indirectly supporting it. Listen, I know that games can be frustrating and unfun to play, and it can feel very nice to get carried by someone after getting stopped countless times, even if that someone might be a cheater. But this isn't the right way, and it just turns you into someone unfairly stomping someone else. You would be the same problem that you were complaining about. But even if you don't do that, there's still another bad thing you can do, and that is acknowledging them. This applies more to cheaters that do it to upset people. By calling them out, you're giving them the very attention they crave. If you rage at a cheater in game, they have concrete evidence that they got to you, so you completely succeeded in their goal of making people upset. And as a consequence, you just give them further reason to keep going. You can not reason with trolls like that or make them change their ways. If someone wants to cheat, they will, and they can only be stopped through other means, like anti-cheat or admins banning them. But it's not up to the player to deal with that, even if Valve thinks that's the way to go. The best option is to simply ignore what they're saying, since often those types of cheaters will insult or make fun of you for pointing them out or even call you a cheater. At the same time, you should still let everyone else know that they're cheating and then initiating a vote against them or asking someone else to kick them. If possible, you should also notify an admin or report them otherwise. The same also goes for griefers or other types of unwelcome behaviors. If no one does anything though, you've really done all you could and it's not up to you anymore. It sucks, but that's really all you can do. It's just important that you don't feed the troll. Don't address them directly, just mute them and move on. And trust me, I know. I know I'm part of the problem. I know that with this video I'm giving cheaters attention. But I've weighed the pros and cons and I've decided that educating people is more important. I haven't even mentioned the cheaters that just do it because it's fun to them. Not because they want to upset people or even get an advantage, but just because they can. Honestly, and don't mind me while I just get this back in here. I can't even really fault them for that. Yes, cheating is bad, but from a purely artistic standpoint, there's just something to hacking into the game, finding out how it works and using it to your advantage. At the end of the day, making your own cheats is nothing more than just modding a game. It's just their way of enjoying the game, kind of like how some people go on Rocket Jump or Surf servers or roleplay as friendlies. And there are people that write their own cheats, which is honestly remarkable. Harmful? When used in multiplayer matches, yes, of course. But it's also very fascinating, to me at least. If you manage to make a cheat that isn't detectable by VAG, a program made by a multi-million dollar company, 
then honestly, props to you. That doesn't mean I support it, nor does it mean I think it's not harmful to other people's fun, but I will be fair and give credit where it's due. Cheating will always be a part of TF2, of any game in fact. But there are ways you can combat it. If you notice a cheater, point them out, ask people to kick them and also report them if you can, especially to mods and admins or community servers. Other than that, don't give them attention and don't just tolerate such behavior. But do complain to Valve about them. After all, they're the ones that can really do something about cheating in their games. You can't change the game, you can only try to enjoy it. So go do that and let the developers worry about the rest. I hope I made sense in this video. If you have any questions, just ask them down below. But more importantly, I am absolutely eager to hear what you guys think of my opinions. Do you agree with me or not? This is a very controversial topic, but I do believe I made myself clear and gave good arguments. And again, keep that in mind. So just tell me down below. But for now, I'd like to thank my wonderful and lovely patrons, namely... One True Ma, 404, Alexis Chavez, Ben Isaacson, Frozen Spaghetti, House, Oleg Andrev, Ren Marty, Shuri, The Sad Boo, Zachary Lecklerk, and unfortunately not as always anymore, Xenomite. Thank you so very much for supporting my channel and me, it just means so much and I appreciate it greatly. And thank you too very much for watching, have a wonderful day and goodbye.